<laughs> the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading presents... This book is cool. With your host, Beth Duda. Coming up, Miss Beth will have a special arts activity, words to put in your word bank, and a special interview with a person who thinks the book you are reading is cool. Hello friends, welcome to This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Duda, and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We have a wonderful book to talk about today. It's called From Tadpole to Frog. And I've invited a special friend to be with me today because I know she's got some great knowledge about frogs. So with me today, I have Avery Cruz Prado de Lima. Hi, Avery, welcome. Hi, Beth, how are you? I am well. So Avery, why do I consider you a frog expert? Well, Beth, it's probably because I have a pet frog and I actually brought him with me today to show you. Oh my goodness, your frog is blue. He is, and his name is Mirchillo, which means blueberry in Portuguese, because he comes from the Amazon. So. Wow. What made you get a frog as a pet? So whenever I was growing up, my mom bought us a water frog, and his name was Mr. Frog, and he lived for 12 years. Wow. And so whenever I moved out, I decided frogs were my favorite creature. And so since then, I have had two pet frogs, Pasta and Mirchillo. I understand that your frog is quite small? Yes, he's very, very small, about the size of a quarter. And then there are some frogs that I've seen that are quite large. They come in all varieties, and that's one of the reasons I like this book so much, is that it really tells us about the life cycle. It's a nonfiction book that really gives us from the time that the frog's eggs are laid all the way through becoming a frog. Now, have you ever watched a tadpole turn into a frog? I have, actually. Whenever I was younger, we had a tadpole. Well, I saw a tadpole and we kept it in our classroom at school and we got to watch it go from the egg all the way to being a tadpole to a froglet to a frog and then we released him out into the wild so that he could grow. I learned things in this book that I didn't know. I, before I started the book, I did know that tadpoles turned into frogs, but I didn't really understand how they did that. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised to learn about frog spawn, which is like a whole group of frog eggs that are laid, and each one of them has the ability to turn into a tadpole. What's the next step? So it's an egg and there's a little black speck in the middle of it, then what happens? Well, that was something I thought was really cool in the book is to learn about how that little black speck turns into a tadpole. It grows its head and its little tail and then it eats the goo within the egg so that it can grow big and then it becomes a tadpole swimming around in the pond until it's ready for its next step. Yes, and I thought, okay, I think in my head, I maybe thought that the tail may be split into two and that's what became the legs, but that's not true at all. No, actually it was really interesting to learn that the gills, which the frog breathes with, well not the frog, the tadpole breathes with before it becomes a frog, turn into its front legs and then it slowly grows those back two legs as it gets bigger and bigger. What are the things that you do with your frog? Well. He stays in his tank all day because I do think he would like to hop away if he had the opportunity. I think he would be an explorer, but he does have a cool personality and he likes to hop around and I feel like he likes to stare at us all day. When we watch soccer sometimes, I think he likes to watch it with us. He'll just stare at the screen or he's my work buddy throughout the day when I work from home. So he's a good accomplice to have in the world. I know another interesting thing about you, Avery, and it's one of the things that I learned when I first met you, and that is that you are an all-star reader. <laughs> My parents would always read books to me whenever I was going to bed, or if they weren't reading books to me, they were showing me all kinds of different books. We would go to the bookstore or the library and they would let me check out as many books as I wanted to. And so some of my happiest memories are when I would go with my mom and my four siblings to the library and I'd come home with a big pile. And 
I'd blow through it in the week and it would be so exciting to go back the next week and see what the new things were or if I was reading a series, what the next book in that series was because I always wanted to know what the next step in the story was. And so as I've gotten older, that stuck with me and it's something that I hope that I'm sharing with other people is a love for reading. I think a, a love of reading helps not only teach you um, how to write a good story, you know, because most very good tales have a beginning, a middle, and an end, but also reading books like From Tadpole to Frog mm -hmm. teach you important knowledge, things that make you interesting um, to talk to, but also make you interested in learning even more things. It's a gateway to all knowledge. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely agree. I've had a pet frog for several years, but there were things that I learned in From Tadpole to Frog that even I didn't know as someone that has a frog and sees it every single day. So it was just a reminder of books opening up a whole world of knowledge for me. And so I was really glad to read this book and to learn more about Murcillo and all of his friends. So we have some words for our word bank. The first word for our word bank is the word gills. Gills. Gills are the part of the body most water animals use for breathing. The next word for our word bank is actually two words, hind legs. Hind legs. Those are the legs that are in the back of a frog. Hind legs. Our next word for our word bank is the word spawn. Spawn, that's a group of eggs. Instead of calling it a group of frog eggs, we call it frog spawn. The next word in our word bank is the word tadpole. Tadpole. It's a very young frog or toad is called a tadpole. And our final word for our word bank is again two words, webbed feet. Webbed feet are any kind of feet with thin flat folds of skin connecting the toes. It's kind of like having a swim fin. We're here in our activity area because we are going to make our own artwork of a frog. We're going to start with some circles. I have two medium-sized circles, one giant circle, and then we've got white circles and three black circles. Those look like lips and kind of a smile. So we're going to assemble this with glue on our paper. Now, we're choosing to make a green frog, but as we heard from Avery, sometimes frogs are blue. So you could make a frog any color that you would like it to be. So we're gonna start with our glue stick. And Avery, will you put some glue on the big green circle and then put it where you'd like it to be on the paper? Very nice. He's more like an African bullfrog, the largest frog in the world. I didn't know that. Did you hear that? The largest frog in the world is an African bullfrog. So this is what our frog looks like. And we could put this on our wall, or if we have a, a refrigerator that takes magnets, we could magnet it onto our refrigerator. Or you could give it to a friend as a special treat. I know you got your frog picture from a friend, didn't you? I did for Christmas this past year for my mother-in-law. Very nice. So you can make your own frog artwork. And if you do, please take a picture of it. You can send it to connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. Oh, look at this. Now we've got friends, frog friends. Remember my friends, reading is the key to succeeding. We'll see you soon. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now. Uh -huh.